Yeah, we back. Yeah, we back. Now, today's gonna be a follow up video to the past couple of videos I've been dropping in regards to what's been going down in South Africa, right? But today's gonna be a little bit different. I know I've been hard on my South African brothers the past couple of videos. You know, I'm passionate, man. I'm very passionate. You know, I'm sorry. When it comes to the unity, when it comes to the camaraderie among our people, I'm very passionate about that. So when I see that being attacked, I'm like a jihadist defending the Quran. I don't play about that. So I just wanna, you know, excuse myself for my good South African brothers. I know I got some good brothers that been following the channel for a very long time from day one. So, you know, it's all love, bros. But you know, you already know what it is, man. You know, I gotta keep it real at all times. But today it's gonna be a little bit different, right? Today I'm gonna be reacting to a comment made by um a white South African, right? We we've been talking about the black South Africans, but today we're gonna talk about the white South Africans, right? You know, we're gonna talk about the European uh descendants. So there was this, um, I don't know this guy. Apparently he's some type of athlete. He goes by the name of uh, Roger Schumann, Roger Showman. I don't know, right? And he had decided to make some comments. I guess he'd been seeing what's been going down, the debates that's been going down over the past couple of days. And he's a so-called uh, white African. <laughs> yeah, he's, a so he's one of them white Africans. So he decided to say this. To those who claim that, white south africans whose families have been born and raised in south africa for generations are merely colonists or dutch settlers let's set the record straight this kind of cultural denialism is not only factually incorrect but also divisive and rooted in ignorance citizenship is not a matter of opinion it is a legal and human right if you are born in a country and your parents were born in that country you are a citizen period this applies to all south africans regardless of race or heritage dismissing the citizenship of those who have lived contributed and built their lives in south africa is a baseless attempt to rewrite history and deny reality south africa belongs to all who live in it as enshrined in our constitution your beliefs do not override the facts and no amount of cultural denialism will change that we need to move forward together not tear each other down with unfounded claims now i don't know who this guy is but apparently he's obviously a public figure in south africa so i guess the south africans might know who he is but anyways his statements uh sparked a decent conversation so you know let's take a look at some of the reactions on social media this person said but you are settlers there are monuments built by your own people that refer to this ha <laughs> oh my god now this is what i don't understand you know when you when you examine the history of the so-called white south african they took immense pride in the european heritage for the vast majority of their existence until very recently they made sure to let you know i am the descendant of europeans my forefathers came from europe my forefathers came from over the ocean and i take immense pride in that and i want to preserve that in all aspects from the education the political institutions from we're not going to race mix because we want to preserve our european genetics they claim they've been here for centuries. They always talk about, oh, the white South Africa have been here for centuries. But during those centuries, they've gone to great lengths to not only preserve, but also uphold and glorify the European ancestry. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that the same way I glorify and uphold my African ancestry. I, I totally understand it, right? But this revisionist history, right? How they trying to rewrite the game. They're trying to rewrite the script. Talking about, no, we the, we the real native Africans. <laughs> we the real Africans. They go, please, please, bro. For the past how many hundred years you've been sitting there talking about, I'm a European. I, I, I'm the descendant of Europeans. I'm fresh out of Europe, bro. All I'm saying is keep that same energy, man. Keep that same energy. And not only have they gone to great lengths to preserve and uphold their European ancestry, when they were in power during the apartheid regime, they even encouraged immigration from European countries to bolster their population, right? They didn't maintain a hostile stance towards other European immigrants. They didn't operate like the black South African. No, there was no, there was no energy of xenophobia in the air. They opened their doors to their European brothers. They said, bro, come over here, come to South Africa, it's lit. <laughs> It's, it's lit over here, bro. Come through. Back during apartheid, they weren't telling other European immigrants, you're not my brother. You're not a real South African. You're not a real South African. No, they were like, bro, you're a European. I'm a European, bro. Come through. Let's get money. But now they're trying to rewrite the script talking about, I've been an African this whole time. Bro, fuck out my face, bro. Let's continue. Pardon my language, man. I'm sorry, but I got it. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. It's crazy. Let's continue. This person said, South Africa belongs to blacks. It doesn't belong to just anyone who lives in it. You're just settlers. We tolerate y'all, but you guys don't belong here. 
Now, shout out to my good South African brothers. I know I've been hard on them the past couple of days, but you know it's all love, bro. You know it's all love. I know all of y'all not down with the nonsense. I know some good brothers down there because a good amount of y'all follow my channel and been following my channel for a very long time and been showing your boy love. So I gotta let, I gotta let that be known. You know, I, I gotta let that be known. Let's continue. This person said. You shall forever remain European settler colonists, despite all your nonsensical citizenship laws you declared and regarding yourselves as Europeans until you lost political office, you bloody murderous colonists. You see, it, it's still some real black men in, in, in the southern coast of Africa. You feel me? It's still some real black. You know, it's still it's still it's still some of that ancient energy of the ancient southern African black man. Like I said in my video yesterday, the ancient southern African black man, he was not to be played with. He was not to be played with. It was very difficult. It was very difficult for the Europeans to conquer that region, man. Now, of course, the mentality of the Southern African black man has changed and metamorphosized over the years. But the same can be said for the black man in any part of the world. But when you look at the history books and you examine the historical record, you have to tip your hat to the Southern African black man. You have to you have to pay homage and show respect to the Southern African black man. When you examine the, the coastal wars, you know, the black man in South Africa waged a war for damn near 100 years straight. He waged a war from 1779 to 1879. When you examine the Zulu Wars, the British regularly got smashed by the Zulus. In fact, in one in one encounter, in one engagement, the entire British invasion force got destroyed. <laughs> the whole damn invasion force got decimated. I think that happened like what 1879. So as you can see, the remnants of the ancient black man in Southern Africa, it's still there. You know, in the spirit of some of those black men down there, some of our brothers down there, it's still there, right? It's heavily decreased, you know, due to indoctrination and a lot of other nonsense, but it's still there. You know, as you can see, it's some of our brothers, it's still there. It's still there. So, you know, for, for the fraction of our brothers down there that still got the ancient spirit of our ancestors, the ancient spirit of our forefathers, you know, much love to y'all brothers, man. You know, those are my brothers. Let's continue. This person said, so just to clarify, the fact that your great grandfather showed up uninvited and claimed land doesn't count anymore. Must be nice to rewrite history. And then the uh, the white the white African, <laughs> he responded and he said, do you know my great grandfather? You see, this is why I don't go back and forth with the European. I don't go back and forth because they don't debate in good faith. They don't operate in good faith. Right. The conversation was not about whether I knew your great grandfather personally. He knew what was being asked of him. But, you know, like I said, man, just asking stupid questions. <laughs> just, look, what the fuck? Nigga, nobody cares about your grandfather. We, we talking in general. Let's continue. Then the good brother responded to him and he said, no, I didn't have the honor, though, by judging by your confidence, you've inherited his sense of entitlement. Ha! <laughs> Let's continue. This person said, what about Shaka? Slaughtering two million plus blacks and stealing their land and their cattle was Shaka an uninvited white guest or a border jumper. Now, here's the flaw with the argument. Shaka Zulu is a native Southern African black man. That, that's a that's a black man from the continent of Africa. <laughs> so you're not going to compare Shaka Zulu, the honorable Shaka Zulu to a fucking Dutch settler. So, number one, the comparison falls flat on his face. Number two, like I mentioned before on my channel, the various military conflicts and conquests that happened on the African continent is no different than what happened on the European continent or the Asian continent, right? When you see Shaka Zulu, Shaka Zulu is no different than Napoleon Bonaparte. The same way Napoleon Bonaparte was stomping through Austria, stomping through Italy, stomping through Germany, stomping through Prussia, stomping through Spain, stomping through Portugal, stomping through Russia, stomping through Switzerland. It's no different in the same way Shaka Zulu was stomping through the southern coast of Africa, right? Every every continent got its conquerors. Every continent got its warmongers. Every continent got its military generals and military leaders. Y'all don't be slandering Napoleon Bonaparte. Y'all uphold the legacy of Napoleon Bonaparte. Y'all honor the legacy of Napoleon Bonaparte. Y'all say Napoleon Bonaparte is the greatest military mind to ever live, even though I don't believe it because the black man in Haiti stomped that nigga out. But at the end of the day, Shaka Zulu, we're not going to slander our ancestors. Y'all not about to play divide and conquer between us and our ancestors. Fuck you. You know, fuck you, bro. Let's continue. This person said, that's why the Constitution has to be amended and the Freedom Charter has to be reviewed. We can't have foreigners who enjoy many privileges than us because of a pink skin in our own country. And then the guy responded. He said, you're a racist. You're a ra Can you believe that? Can you believe that a, a descendant of European settlers calling a native Southern African black man a racist on his own land? That's crazy, man. But you see, that's why I said it's still some brothers down there that still got the ancient spirit 
of the ancient black man from back in the day, man. That spirit still that's that spirit is still alive amongst the you know amongst the population, right? I got that spirit inside me too. The spirit of the ancient black man. I got it inside me too. They they they, they ain't beat it out of me yet. They didn't beat that spirit out of me yet. It's still inside me, right? So our, some of our brothers in South Africa, that spirit is still inside them. You know, shout out to my brothers. Let's continue. This person said at the top, you must think that sellout Mandela for giving you that self entitlement. Your ancestors came here and robbed our grandparents of their land and stole their livestock and their minerals. And the goddamn, the goddamn white African, he responded by posting a picture of him side by side with Mandela. <laughs> God damn, man. Mandela in that Rainbow Nation garbage. Golly. Let's continue. This person said, it's not cultural denialism that your people stole everything that doesn't belong to them so that their future generations can be set for life. If it's all about fairness, why not share the wealth? your people stole and give it to all those who deserve it now like i said man like i said once you start talking about things that actually matter tangible things like land and resources and the economy and the means of production and the levers of control of society that's when you realize all of that unity all that oh we are brothers and sis we brothers and sisters you notice that quickly crumbles right it, once you once you start talking about real things that, that are really tangible you notice all that unity and camaraderie and brotherhood and sisterhood that go that goes out the window you know the hostility you'll, you'll you'll see how quickly the energy becomes hostile right it's all cool when you talk about you know beauty pageants and things like that things that are really inconsequential but when you talk about things that really matter then you then you see the energy becomes real hostile real real quick you know very quickly very quickly you know trust me trust me trust me trust me let's continue now this person jumped into the conversation at the top he said I grew up very poor. My dad was a low rank policeman and my mom was jobless. It was strict discipline, hard work, or you get nowhere. No freebies, no handouts, no luxuries. Many grew up like me. It's not where you come from, but what you do that matters. The person at the bottom responded and said, you cannot compare a few poor whites to the billions of poor blacks dying from poverty that was caused by your people. I'm a graduate and a businessman. I'm the best at what I do, but it's difficult for me because the white man has monopolized the whole supply chain to their advantage. Now, shout out to this brother. I'm assuming it's a black South African brother. You know, I respect him for not sticking his head in the sand like like a good amount of them would do and say, oh, we are family. You know, obviously a productive, a productive black man who looks around and he can see the landscape and he can see things are things are a bit lopsided. Right. You have a, a strong minority. You have a minority of the population that control and owns the majority of the industry and the commerce. Right. The levers of control, the means of production, the supply chains. Right. Vertically integrated from top to bottom. And when you examine how they accumulated that. It wasn't by hard work and discipline and, you know, you know, just good old getting up early and going to sleep late. No, 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 no. It was not. It was not. It was a concerted effort to block certain people out of society and to push certain people to the top of society. Um, and unfortunately, that has never been reckoned with still to this day. It's never been reckoned with still to this day. Um it's just kind of been, you know, it kind of puts a makeup on the situation, you know, cosmetically trying to, you know, mask the situation. But at the end of the day, South African society in terms of economics is still very heavily lopsided, right? Very heavily lopsided. Yes, on the surface, apartheid is a thing of the past. But at the end of the day, just like in the days of apartheid, you have a majority of the population being limited to a minority control over the economy and the society. And you have a minority of the population still in control of the majority of the industry and commerce and control of society. So at the end of the day, apartheid, you know, on the surface has left. But tangibly, economically, where it truly matters, apartheid is still in effect. And no matter how much you cry about the Nigerians and cry about the Zimbabweans and cry about the Malawians and cry about this black dude over here, this black girl over here. At the end of the day, your tangible situation, your concrete situation will never change. You're still going to be in the same situation, you know. So until you confront that head on, you're just wasting everybody's time. Let's continue. This person said, just 30 years ago, you referred to yourselves as Europeans driven by a sentiment of disdain towards Africans and a refusal to identify as Africans, despite being born in this country generations ago. The primary motivation behind Europeans in South Africa switching from identifying as Europeans to South Africans was the fear of a black democratic government. 
with the end of apartheid and the transition to democracy, the formerly dominant white minority was forced to share power with the black majority. This identity shift was largely driven by a desire to adapt to the new political landscape rather than a true genuine desire for reconciliation or national unity. The fear of losing privileges, economic insecurity or perceived threats or perceived threats to their cultural identity led some individuals to rebrand themselves as South Africans in order to maintain a sense of belonging and influence within the new governing structure. You cannot fool us all. Shout out to my good South African brothers, man. Shout, shout out to my, you know, shout out to my good, you know, shout out to all, you know, 35 of y'all. You know? <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. But shout out to my good brothers, man. You know, that still see, you know, still got your eyes open, man. That's a fact. That's a fact. Like I told you, for centuries upon centuries upon centuries, they've maintained the fact that we are the descendants of Europeans. We represent European civilization, European culture, European genetics, European ancestry, European philosophy, European ideology. It wasn't up until just a few years ago them boys start talking about we Africans now. <laughs> Please keep that same energy, boy. Keep that same energy. Take a look up on the screen. They was not playing about the European ancestry. They was they was letting everybody know we are Europeans. This bench is for Europeans. This stairwell is for Europeans. These bathrooms are for Europeans. This neighborhood is for Europeans. This building is for Europeans. Bro, they let it be known. They was repping that European flag hard. They was like, listen, all our European brothers, come come migrate to the country. You know, listen, they was riding hard for their European ancestry, right? There was no nationalism back in those days. It was full on gang banging for the European identity. That's what it was, right? It was pan-Europeanism, right? So now when we come with the pan-Africanism, now, now they upset. Now they mad. Now they mad, right? Now they done brainwashed our, our South African brothers to stand side by side with them under nationalism when they've been riding for European identity for centuries. Well, guess what? We riding for African identity, period, point blank. Real talk, man. You a real European? I'm a real African. Let's continue. Now we got this other, now we got this white lady, this other white African. She, she jumped into the debate. She said, in 1994, I was 22 years old a struggling young person trying to build a life for myself. Politics and race was the last thing on my mind. As an adult, Nelson Mandela was my first president. I didn't even understand privilege or felt that I was giving something up. <laughs> the brother responded, he said, a 22 year old woman in 1994, born to white parents would benefit in various ways from apartheid, often at the expense of the black majority. Her family had access to quality land, housing, and living conditions, while blacks were forced to live in overcrowded townships with no money. She attended charter schools equipped with quality education, while black schools were underfunded and overcrowded. Her family had better job prospects, career advancement, and higher income opportunities, while blacks faced job restrictions and lower wages. She had access to quality health care, sanitation, and social services, while blacks faced inadequate resources and services. As a white girl, she would have had the right to vote and participate in the, in the political process, while blacks were disenfranchised and excluded. I can continue if you like and show you how you benefited from the apartheid regime. Now, this is why I'll never understand the level of hostility that the xenophobic black South African would bring to other African nationals. Because you have the sons and daughters of the apartheid regime walking amongst you every day, and you don't feel any sense of hostility towards them, right? You don't feel any hostility towards them at all. In fact, you look at them as part of the family. They're my brothers. They're my peoples, right? Let bygones be bygones. We move into the future. We're not looking in the past, right? But when it comes to your so-called African brother, you're holding grudges. It's no forgiveness, right? It's hostility forever. That's why I don't respect it. I, I just don't understand it. But anyways, this person said, at some point, if a group of people has existed on the land for more than 200 years, they deserve a right to be called native. Now, I've seen some people making this argument. I even had some people making this argument in my comment section by saying that, well, the African-Americans are able to, you know, they're, they're counted as Americans or, you know, the black folks in France, they're counted as Frenchmen or the black folks in the UK, they're counted as uh, British, uh, you know, black British. But here's the here's the uh, underlying fact of those things. Right. The, the black populations in these European societies, they never committed crimes against humanity, against their fellow citizens, right? They never committed acts of economic terrorism against their fellow citizens, right? They never committed acts of biological warfare against their fellow citizens, right? They never concocted plans to wipe out the entire population of their fellow citizens, right? So it's a bit nuanced. It's a very unique situation in South Africa 
where your so-called brothers and sisters actually have a history of committing all types of barbaric and demonic acts against you that you've decided to you know brush over your shoulder and they and you let bygones be bygones it's not the same right the black frenchman has never committed biological warfare or economic terrorism or widespread genocidal violence against the the white population right the same thing for the african-american the black britishman whatever whatever it's not the same thing it's not the same thing and i guarantee if they did commit acts of you know crimes against humanity against them they would not count them as their brothers and sisters i guarantee if the black Frenchman did what the white South African did, then I guarantee there would be no peace and reconciliation. There would be no forgiveness, right? There would be no forgiveness. They would not look at you as part of the family. They would look at you as an enemy with a history of treachery. That's the fact. So it's not an even comparison. It's not an even comparison. It's going to take a little bit longer to transition from I'm a European supremacist and I want to wipe out the black man and commit, you know, genocidal terror and biological warfare and economic terrorism to go to well I'm, I'm an african just like you and you my brother you know it's gonna take it's gonna take a little longer to transition from from it's, that's a big transition to make right that's a big transition to make from doing all those acts of atrocities to then trying to say well i'm just an african just like you bro <laughs> like listen it's, it, listen it's gonna take a while it's gonna take a while let's continue this person said incorrect they are europeans you don't get to redefine words and then he attached a picture i guess this is from the apartheid era as you can see on the bench europeans only right europeans only right o only the white man could sit on that side of the bench <laughs> only the white man could sit on this side of the bench i thought i thought we was brothers and sisters you know i thought i thought you was african just like me god damn let's get to you now take a look up on the screen i guess this is also another picture from the apartheid era god damn only the white man could walk up that side of the steps <laughs> Only the white man can walk on these steps. Jesus Christ. Only the European, only Europeans only. You see the sign. Europeans only. I thought we was all native Africans. I thought we was all Africans. What happened? When did the white man become an African? Ha. <laughs> ah, that's just funny. This person said, white South Africans accepted political loss, but they'll never willingly let the Negro sit at the table, economically speaking, especially the Cape Town elites. Now, listen. That's a fact of the matter. Like I told you earlier in the video, all that talk of unity, oh, camaraderie, brotherhood, all of that goes out the window once you start talking about tangible things. Once you start talking about tangible things, all that camaraderie, we all, we all brothers, we all South Africans, you know, no, no color. We all, we a mixed race rainbow nation. Listen, the rainbow nation that doesn't mix, they don't mix with you genetically. They don't mix with you economically. Everything is segregated, right? They keep everything segregated. They, they gatekeep everything, but, but it's the, it's a rainbow nation though, right? <laughs> it's the rainbow nation though. In summary, man, anyways, in summary, right? Listen, South African brothers, don't take it personally. Don't take it personally because don't take it personally because you feel like I'm, I'm attacking your white brothers. Because when you attacking the Nigerians and the other African nationals, you attacking my black brothers. So don't take it personally now that I put your white brothers under the microscope, man. Just You just got to take that. You just got to accept that. Accept that. Don't don't run to the defense of the white man. Don't try to defend the white man. Just accept that. The same way you want to fire off shots at the black man, I'm firing off shots at your white brothers. Anyways, man, this is what never called us Salim. Mac and the Billy, yes, indeed. Cash app in the description. Support the album, man. Support the album. Peace. I feel like I'm 75. Know that your team be full of them traders. You know that can never be mine. I feel like I'm 75. I'm back in my zone and we young. She said that she ready to come be my wife and hoping I don't do a wrong. Can't you do it again? Never be mine. I'm living the best like a lamb. I mean, no chicken and lamb. Accustomed to call me the man. Doubt what I drive. I'm keeping it way in the cover. She want me to tell her I love her. I told her I'm breaking the rules. I told her we making it new. Feel like I'm 75. Know that your team be full of them traders. You know that can never be mine. I'm grabbing a thought when I drive. I'm back in my zone and we young. She said that she ready to come be my wife. Yeah, hoping I don't do her wrong. I gave her my word and it's bone. I'm whipping the best like a lamb. I mean, no chicken and lamb. Accustomed to call me the man. I never be up on the gram. I'm keeping that way undercover. She want me to tell her I love her. I told her I'm breaking the rules. I told her we making the news. They loving me, standing alone, I'm a hundred deep Enemy plotting is still in reach They trying to make sure that we underneath Trying to make sure that we never make it Coming for power, come get acquainted Coming for everything that I wanted Feeling like Drake, but I really wrote it Feeling like Kendrick, I'm checking names Gotta roll up while I go insane Got so much stress, I've been getting away Stuffing these racks in this Louis case One thing for certain, I'm about to shake Keeping 100 and nothing less Stick with the family since day one Had to stay down in my day come Had to stay down, but I'm never
never patient. Hop on the mic and I motivate her. Hop on the mic and I drop a classic. Haters can't see me, they copping glasses. Back in the studio, make it match. Got a new tape and it's in production. Back on my business, I got a budget. Staying low key when I'm out in public. Feel like I'm 75. None of your team be full of them traders, you know that can never be mine. I'm grabbing a thought when I drive. I'm back in my zone and we young. She said that she ready to come be my wife, yeah, hoping I don't do her wrong. I gave her my word in this bond. I'm webbing the best like a lamb. I mean, no chicken and lamb. Accustomed to call me the man. I never be up on the gram. I'm keeping that way on the cover. She want me to tell her I love her. I told her I'm breaking the rules. I told her we making the news.